Sam Mewis, Rose Lavelle, Tobin Heath, Kristen Press, Rachel Daly, Sam Kerr, Pernille Herder, and now Alex Morgan as well, all going to the WSL. The league is just stockpiling talent for fun. What does it mean for women's football? Can a team finally start to compete with Lyon on the European scale? And what does this mean for the NWSL? It is a women's soccer arm race right now. And I want to talk about it right here on Pitch Side with Parker. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not a type of brother to play with. See a lot of people acting like a, oh, yeah. Or ball play sounding like haters. We the young kings of this generation, oh, yeah. What's up, y'all? Welcome back. Pitch Side with Parker. Shout out to everybody who's already subscribed. If you're new, become a part of the squad. Come along for the ride. Lots more soccer content every single week. Also, be sure to like this video. I really want to impress that on people. The best way to help this channel channel grow is to like the videos. It helps more people see it, and it really helps shake things out in the YouTube algorithm. Keep me motivated and like these videos. And lastly, be sure to follow me on Twitter at Parker K. Johnson. I tweet about all the things I talk about in the videos, and you can get involved as well. It's a great way to interact with me, and I'm always on there. Let's get into the video. So it's a long list of players that I just mentioned at the beginning. And it's some of the biggest stars in world soccer, and they're all heading to the WSL. You got a team like Manchester City, who has signed Rose Lavelle and Sam Mewis. And then they also got players like Lucy Bronze and Alex Greenwood, outside backs, both coming from Lyon to Manchester City. You got a team like Manchester United, whose women's team has been historically bad signing Tobin Heath and Kristen Press, two of America's most exciting attacking players. You've got a team like Chelsea, who has been the biggest spender of all, signing Pernilla Harder, who was the best goal scorer on Lyon's main Champions League competition, Wolfsburg. Not to mention one of the best goal scorers in the NWSL, Sam Kerr, who also moved to Chelsea. And even Rachel Daly, who you've seen me talk about in these videos on the channel before, one of my favorite women's players from Houston Dash, who was the best player, most outstanding player in the NWSL Challenge Cup. She signed a loan deal with West Ham as well. And the big one that has come out in recent days, Alex Morgan moving to Spurs. And there's a lot of people throwing around these ideas of, oh, maybe the NWSL is losing its status as a top league in the world. Maybe this means that the WSL is going to become the top league. And I want to talk about those ideas in this video because my take on it is that this is not a bad thing necessarily for the NWSL, although the jury is still a little bit out. The important thing to note about most of these transfers, especially the ones that are for the American players who have been in the NWSL, is that they're loan deals. They're simply a matter of circumstance right now. Currently, the NWSL is doing what they're calling the fall series which is kind of localized games that will take place over the next couple of months, but it's not an official season. And again, we are seeing that a lot of the top stars are opting out of those NWSL teams. Several of the big players from NC Courage, including Crystal Dunn and Jessica McDonald, have opted out. And then some of the big US national team stars, Megan Rapino, uh, Julie Ertz, have also opted out of the challenge or of the fall series. And it seems like a lot of these players are deciding that the best move is to go to the WSL in the meantime. Most of these players will probably return to the NWSL at the end of their contracts, but especially with the way that America has handled the whole pandemic situation and the fact that playing games in the US uh, feels a little bit less safe at the moment, I think that is also a big factor in the way that these deals are being done it's a very understandable move for a lot of these players, but I am curious if this will have an impact in the future, because right now, certainly these players are playing their part for the WSL, and it's made for a very exciting start to the season there in the WSL. Hopefully there will be a few more contenders for the title this season. It was a three-team race last year between Arsenal City and Chelsea. 
But, you know, a team like Manchester United is, you know, attempting to sign some of these bigger players and be more competitive. Players like Daly, who's gone to West Ham, and Alex Morgan, who has gone to Spurs, are both choosing to go for lower table teams in hopes of kind of bringing them up and helping them challenge a little bit more as well. So I think this is very good for the WSL for sure. While some of the draws to the WSL are certainly time-centered in terms of the things I've talked about with factors of them going away from the USA, there are some pull factors of the WSL as well. For American players, it means you can play in Europe, but you don't have to learn a new language. It means Champions League competition if you finish top two, and next season that will actually be expanded to top three in England, which again makes a big difference because a lot of times these are three-team races in the WSL. Uh, there's no similar competition really in the U.S., and I think that's part of actually what made the NWSL Challenge Cup really exciting was that it was a knockout tournament that included all of the American teams. So it had a similar allure to what the Champions League does in Europe. There's other pull factors as well. I mean, there's just a, a footballing tradition that exists in England. And yes, they have not been ahead of the curve on the women's game as much as the United States has. But nonetheless, if you look at somebody like Tobin Heath, I mean, she's going to be wearing the number 77 at Manchester United. The number seven was taken, but just the grandeur of the seven shirt at United, nothing in the States really has that exact same type of prestige to it. It's just a quality that America simply does not have. And while America ha has a wonderful women's soccer tradition, there's just not quite that same value that intrinsically, if you are a lover of the sport, exists in some of these cities you know houston is not a, a city of footballing royalty the way that london is if you look at rachel daly's move move from dash to west ham in my opinion this is just a guess really but i also think that people want to compete at the highest level the wsl is i think similar competitively to the nwsl there's slightly more parity in the nwsl as we saw in the challenge cup but it's still been a top team winning it every single year, at least recently with North Carolina Courage. The allure, again, of playing in Europe makes a big difference because if you can face off against a team like Lyon or Wolfsburg or uh, PSG in the Champions League, you feel like you're really playing the best that there is to offer. In the USA, I feel like some of these players, especially the US national team stars, they gotta just be getting a little sick of playing against the same players over and over and over again. The U.S. Women's National Team operates very uniquely compared to other national team setups and compared especially to the way the men's game works in that these players actually have contracts with the U.S. Soccer Federation and they have contracts that that is their first priority. They have these enormous training camps where tons and tons of players are invited it's very competitive and that is what sparks i think a lot of the competition and greatness that comes from the u.s women's soccer team however as i'm saying i think there could just be a bit of fatigue that comes in with that as well and some of these players are looking for a new challenge that's not to say that the WSL is necessarily an objectively better league than the NWSL is, but it's just something new. And I think as a player, you want to play the best, you want to beat the best. And let's be honest, some of these American players have conquered the US game. They've reached the top of it. I'm thinking about maybe Rose Lavelle. Yes, she won a World Cup early, but she is now in a position where she can help Manchester City succeed and reach heights that they haven't reached before. You can become a legend in that way as well, and since she's already done it on the international stage, maybe this is her opportunity. I don't think this is the end of the world for the NWSL, and people who are making it sound like that are really getting this overblown. I would say in the end, it's a big net positive for the WSL, even if a lot of these players end up going back after their loan deals are up, but the NWSL isn't really losing any standing here, I don't think at all. And the exodus of some of these players is just gonna allow younger players to step up and get a bigger spotlight on themselves, just as they did during the Challenge Cup in Utah. The only question left for me is down the line, can the NWSL present opportunities that are similarly attractive to international players? We already know it's gonna be a home for American players. 
we've already seen that certain internationals are willing to come to the N NWSL and compete there. But for Europeans especially, what can draw them to the NWSL? And to me, the biggest possibility is Angel City FC. I talked about this right when they were first announced as a team a few weeks ago. I think the biggest excitement for me personally about Angel City is that LA is a destination city. People outside of the US love LA. They come for vacation. They know it's where the stars live. It is a big selling point. Just as say London has that attraction from a footballing standpoint, LA in 2020 has everything that people love about America, especially from an outside perspective. And I could see it being a huge destination point for a lot of top European players. Unfortunately, the way NWSL is right now, they don't have a lot of cities with the same sticking point. The biggest city that has a club in the NWSL is Chicago with the Red Stars. And they have been able to attract a lot of international players in the past. So we've seen that work for them. And unfortunately, the way it is with New York, I mean, sky blue, okay. But let's be honest, it's in New Jersey. They don't have fantastic facilities. And unless they change their own stuff around, I don't see that being a huge uh, destination for people as much as Angel City could be. So ultimately, it's a lot of questions that are up in the air, but these moves have had a huge impact on the landscape of women's football. So I think it's important to stop arguing about which league this is better for, which league is the best in the world, what league might be dusted. None of that is important. The important thing is that the investment is continuing in the women's game. And right now, if you want to watch the most exciting players, watch the WSL. They're starting to have games on NBC in the USA. So definitely watch those. Show them that there is a, a hunger for these games. And the games that aren't on NBC usually are on the FA player completely free on the internet. So you should watch them. It's where all the best players are right now. It's an exciting time to be a fan of women's soccer. So that's all I got for this one. Leave your thoughts in the comments below for sure. I want to hear what y'all think as well. As I've said before, I'm a little bit newer to the women's club game. So if I got some things wrong, definitely feel free to correct me. I'd love hearing the feedback. Uh, but it, it is something I wanted to talk about in a video that I wanted to make. So thank you for watching. Like the video. Be sure to subscribe if you're new. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.